how will we live together, was the question asked by Hashem Sarkis at the 17th Architecture Biennale. And my answer was wetland. For me, the Venice Biennale is similar to the Mos Eisley Cantina from Star Wars. It's a gathering place where creatures from all over the world come together to engage in a multicultural conversation. And I wanted to take such a conversation to Venice. Today, we live on a planet with a population of 7 billion people. It is projected by 2050, we will become 10 billion people. A Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation report in 2019 states that we have to build the equivalent of one New York City every month over the next 40 years to meet the demand of that growing population. The question is, how do we build our future cities knowing that we are in a state of a climate emergency and the construction industry is responsible for 40% of that crisis? The construction industry is responsible for 40% of global pollution. Cement alone is responsible for 8% of global CO2 emissions. Today, we consume 30 billion tons of cement per year. It is calculated by 2050, we will consume uh, 60 billion tons of cement per year. So the mathematics don't add up. The question is, how do we do it? The construction industry is also responsible for 40% of resource depletion on the planet. It's also responsible for 40% of global energy consumption. 86% of that energy still comes from the burning of fossil fuels, while 14% only comes from renewable energy. We are still very, very far behind. This challenge was not something that the modern architect had to face, the 20th century architect. It is a challenge for the 21st century architect. So I ask myself today, what is my responsibility as an architect in face of this challenge? At the Venice Biennale, several pavilions uh, proposed by building sustainable wood, such as the Philippine Pavilion and the United States Pavilion. But me, coming from Dubai, the vernacular architecture of the UAE is from corals. How do we build with corals? It was possible for a few hundred people, but today it is a population of 10 million people and projected to grow to 20 million in the next 10 years. So mud is also not possible. So I had to think of solving the problem in a new way. I went back and tried to understand what is the real problem in Portland cement. I came to learn that the biggest problem is in the binder, the lime, and converting limestone to lime releases a tremendous amount of CO2. It's a chemical reaction, uh, heat intensive uh, absorption uh, process. So I had to find an alternative to lime that could be a binder in the Portland cement mix. The answer would lie in the geography and geology. So I started to walk the landscape of the UAE in search for a new mineral that could possibly replace that line. I came across the sabkhas of the UAE. Sabkha is an Arabic word found in the English dictionary that means salt flats. I was immediately captivated by those salt flats and was certain that there was a binder in the cementitious crust that is gluing these minerals together. So the question becomes, what is this binder? and could it possibly offer to be an alternative to lime? Sabkhas are not a local phenomena to the UAE, they are a global phenomena. You find sabkhas in Ethiopia, in the Mojave Desert in California, as well as in Bolivia. The sabkhas in Bolivia are extracted for their lithium that is used in Tesla car batteries, as well as in mobile phones. I also learned that a lot of the vernacular architecture of North Africa is built from salt flats. Siwa is an 800-year-old town in Egypt on the border of Libya that is all built using salt flats. This is contextual architecture. It is architecture that is built for its specific context and specific region. Funnily enough, I also learned that the 
architecture in Star Wars is all built from salt flats and is a vernacular architecture of Tunisia and is not a stage set. Having learned so much, I also learned that sabkhas are carbon sinks. They absorb CO2. One square meter of sabkha can absorb more CO2 than one square meter of rainforest. So I could not promote their extraction and I had to fight for their conservation. Then the question becomes, where else can I find these minerals that are present in Sabha? I quickly learned through extensive research that these minerals are all present in the reject brine of desalination water. The MENA region is responsible for 48% of global desalination. The UAE is the third largest desalinator in the world and on a daily basis dumps the equivalent of 4,800 Olympic-sized pools of reject brine back into the Arabian Sea. This is causing an environmental disaster. Salt plus water equals battery. It's trapping heat, increasing the temperature, killing the marine species, as well as the coral life within the Arabian Sea. So we took reject brine solution into our office and started to experiment if we could produce structures and architecture from that reject brine. Our first attempts were simple. We suspended fabrics that work in tension into the reject brine of desalination water, and over three days, they would crystallize and start to work in compression. But the problem of this architecture and these structures is similar to the vernacular architecture of North Africa is that this is soluble architecture. This can only work for temporary structures. And I was not looking for a halfway solution and wanted to find a true contender to Portland cement. So I realized it was important I start having conversations with universities. My first collaboration was with the American University of Sharjah, the biochemistry laboratory. We started extracting minerals from sabkhas and reject brine and producing with them different material finishes to understand the properties of each of these salts found in reject brine. We quickly learned that magnesium oxide is a salt found in reject brine that could actually replace lime as it is an insoluble salt. Then we moved to a more specific collaboration with the New York University of Abu Dhabi, the Advanced Material Building Research Labs. And we started to produce cement blocks from, based on magnesium oxide cement. These blocks are still at lab level, and for them to become at a market level needs time. Uh, the process is still expensive, and it has to be studied thoroughly, just like any new material or emerging technology. Solar panels 10 years ago were expensive and inefficient. Today, they are very efficient and affordable. Through the process, we learned that this cement also needs to absorb CO2 into, in order to gain its structural strength. It is rather a weak material unless exposed to CO2. It will absorb 18% of its mass in order to become strong enough equal to cement. I will show you a video and you will immediately recognize the module that has been carbonated versus the module that is not carbonated. Finally, after having re-questioned modern materials, we wanted to re-question the modern production of space and architecture. Hence, we started a third collaboration with the University of Tokyo. We wanted to build and present a prototype in Venice that is an homage to the vernacular architecture of UAE. We wanted the prototype to be inspired from the coral shapes that are the vernacular architecture of the United Arab Emirates. So we asked students to imagine corals and draw them by hand into the sand molds and then cast them. The first prototype was built at the University of Tokyo but I was keen on vocational learning. So we had students from University of Tokyo talk to students in the United Arab Emirates, and we built the second prototype in Dubai. Finally, we had to move and present 
our findings and works at the National Pavilion of the United Arab Emirates at the Venice Biennale. We also exhibited large format pictures taken by Emirati artist Farah Al Qasimi that show the tension between man and nature. We were able to build a pavilion using 2,400 modules, all drawn by hand and produced in Venice. We shipped nothing to Venice. We even took subha sections in our suitcases to display them within the exhibition. But to build such a complex structure, we needed some aid of technology, and specifically with the Obuchi Lab at Tokyo University. We had to provide a structural verification to the Venice Biennale team that this structure was sound and safe for public use. So the Tokyo University Laboratory reprogrammed devices from the gaming industry that would help us uh, develop an ASML model as we construct the prototype. I will show you a video that briefly explains how this works. You will see the, the worker wearing a wrist device that will light up blue when he is within the model space. There is also a laptop that is connected directly live with Tokyo University and a base station that is uploading an as-built model that is being scanned by devices placed in the ceiling. Through this process, we were able to provide the Biennale with a structural verification. We developed a new system and a new way of construction. This is the antithesis of modern architecture and modern production of space. We built the pavilion using 2,400 modules, all built through only conversations and not a single drawing. Finally, I would like to say that it is important that we bring back culture and identity into the production of architecture. And I ask the question, can industrial waste of our cities be our future vernacular? Thank you.